Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we will learn more about polynomials. A quadratic polynomial can have maximum two zeros. How can you find the zeros of a quadratic polynomial? It depends on the type of the polynomial we have. In some cases, we can use splitting the middle term method or you can use different methods to find the zeros of quadratic polynomial. So let us see some examples. So x square minus 2x minus 8. This is a quadratic polynomial. So in this case, we can use the factorization using the splitting the middle term method. The first step is we need to multiply the constant term with the coefficient of the x, the term x square. So here uh, the coefficient here is 1. So you will have to multiply minus 8 into 1 and you can write it on the side. And we need to factorize it into two parts so that when you add it you should get minus 2. So that means here when you multiply or the product should be minus 8 and the sum should be minus 2. So how can you find two factors of 8 so that the sum will be equal to minus 2. So here you can see that 4 into 2 is 8 and to get minus 8 one of this should be negative and as we need negative 2 as the sum the bigger number should be negative and the uh, smaller number should be positive. So here we can take minus 4 and minus 2, oh sorry, plus 2. And this can be written after splitting the middle term. And you can write, instead of minus 2x, you can write minus 4x plus 2x minus 8. So we have split the middle term into two parts. Now we need to group these two parts. And take the common thing out from each group. Here we can see x square minus 4x has a common factor x. And you can write it like x into x minus 4 plus and in this group we can see 2 is a common factor. You can take it out. Then we get x minus 4 in the bracket. And in this we can see x minus 4 is common in both these terms. You can take that also out x minus 4 into x plus 2. So you can write it like this. We have found two factors of this polynomial. This polynomial will become 0 when either of this is equal to 0. So we can equate each of it equal to 0. Then we will find what is the value of x. So x will be equal to 4 here. And in this case x plus 2 is equal to 0 and x is equal to minus 2. That means if you use 4 and minus 2 in place of x, this polynomial will become 0. So these are the zeros of the polynomial. Let us call it alpha and beta. Alpha plus beta is equal to 4 minus 2. 4 plus negative 2 is 4 minus 2 that is equal to 2. Is it equal to b by, minus b by a? Yes, because we can write 2 is equal to 2 can be written as 2 by 1 as well. 2 is actually minus of b. So b is minus 2. So minus b will be plus 2. So that is this. So you can write it as minus b by here a is 1. So you can write minus b by a. So we have verified alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a. Similarly, you can verify the product also. Alpha into beta is 4 into minus 2. 4 into minus 2 is equal to minus 8, which can also be written as minus 8 by 1, which is C by A. So we have verified the sum and the product is equal to the minus B by A and C by A respectively. We will use one more example to make it more clear. So let us suppose x, 6x x square minus 3 minus 7x is the polynomial. We need to find the zeros of it and verify the relationship with the zeros and the coefficients. So here you can see we can use the splitting the middle term method but this is not actually the middle term. Because this is not in the proper order. 
So we like to first write it in the proper order. We can write it as minus seven x. Now it is in the descending order of the power of the variables. After this, you can use the splitting capital term as we used in the previous question. So the first step is constant term multiplied by the coefficient of x square. So minus three into six is minus eighteen. And now we need to find two factors of it. So that when the uh, sum should be equal to minus seven. So how can you find it? You can easily find nine into two is eighteen. And in order to get negative seven, we can keep the bigger number as negative and the smaller number of positive. So here we can split the middle term as minus nine plus two. So here we can rewrite it six x square minus nine x plus two x. We can take the common thing out from each group. So here in this, we can see three x is common. Three x into two x. So this will be when you multiply, you should get this. So three x into two x is six x square minus three. And there is nothing common between this other than one. So we can take one as the common thing. Two x minus three. Now we can see two x minus three is common. Two x minus three. Into 3x plus 1. So we have got two factors of the polynomial. Then we can equate each of these to get the value of the zeros. So 2x minus 3 is equal to zero. Then 2x is equal to plus 3. And we are taking to the other side. So x is equal to 3 by 2. Or we can keep this also equal to zero. So 3x plus 1 is equal to zero. So 3x is equal to Minus one. We are taking to the other side, and x is equal to minus one by three. So we have got two zeros of the polynomial. So let us call it alpha and beta. To verify the relationship, we can take alpha plus beta is equal to three by two plus minus one by three by this minus one by three. Here, as the denominators are not. Same, we will have to take the LCM. So we can take the LCM as six, and then three into three is nine. Two into minus one is minus two. So we will get seven by six. Is this equal to minus b? Yes. So here seven is minus b by x plus is a. Multiplication of the product of the zeros that is three by two into minus one by three. Which is equal to three into minus one is minus three by six, which is equal to c by a. So we have verified this. Another example is four uh, u square plus eight u. Here there is no middle term, so we cannot use the splitting the middle term, but we will have to use some other way to factorize it. Here you can see. Both this term has a common thing that is 4u. We can split it as u plus 2. So 4u into u plus 2, and the polynomial will become zero either when this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. So that means 4u is equal to zero, then u will be equal to zero. Or u when u plus 2 is equal to zero, u will be equal to minus 2. That means the zeros of the polynomials are zero and negative two. Let us verify the relationship. Alpha plus beta is equal to zero plus minus two. That is minus two. Is it equal to minus b by a? It is not. So we can write this as minus eight by four. In order to write it in terms of b and a. We can rewrite minus two as minus eight by four, which is equal to minus of b, because b is plus eight here, so minus b will be minus eight, which is here. By a is four, so we can prove that alpha plus b is equal to minus b by a, and in the case of the product of the zeros, alpha into beta is zero into. Minus two, which is equal to zero, which is equal to zero by four, which is equal to c here is zero. There is no constant there. That means constant uh, c is zero. So that is 
equal to C by A is again 4. So we can write it as alpha beta is equal to C by A. We have verified the relationship. T square minus 15 is another quadratic polynomial. How can you find the zeros? We can use the factorization using the identity A square minus B square. This is of the form A square minus B square. Then it can be split as A plus B into A minus B. So this can be split as T plus root 15 and T minus root 15 because 15 is the square of root 15. So we have got two factors. So the zeros will be either T plus root 15 is equal to 0 means T is equal to minus root 15 and from this we can get T is equal to plus root 15. We can verify the zeros using the formula alpha plus beta is equal to so here alpha plus beta is plus uh, minus root 15 plus root 15 is equal to 0 which is equal to minus b here b is 0 that means this is equal to minus b by a or alpha beta is equal to plus root 15 into minus root 15 which is equal to minus 15 which is c by a here c is minus 15 and a is 1 so this also can be written as minus 15 by 1 so we have verified alpha beta is equal to c by a another example is 4 s square minus 4 s plus 1 uh, we can split it using the splitting the middle term method so 4 into 1 is 4 we can split it into 2 into 2 but as we need the sum as minus 4 we need to make it both negative so this can be split as 4 s square minus 2 s minus 2 s so we have written minus 4 s as minus 2 s minus 2 s plus 1 then group it and take the common thing out so here in both this we have 2s we can take that out so we have 2s minus 1 and in this you have minus 1 out and 2s minus 1 as 2s minus 1 is common in both these terms we can take that out 2s minus 1 into 2s minus 1 so here we have two factors of the polynomial uh, this uh, this polynomial will become 0 either when this is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0 that means 2s minus 1 is equal to 0 so 2s will be 1 s is equal to 1 by 2 we have got 1 0 of the polynomial and here again we are getting uh, 2s minus 1 is equal to 0 so 2s is equal to 1 s is equal to 1 by 2 so we have got two equal zeros for this polynomial. So we can verify the relationship as we did in the previous question. Here alpha plus beta is equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 which is equal to 2 by 2 or we can also write this as 4 by 4 because we need to write it as equal to minus b by a. Here if you write it as 4 by 4 we can make it equal to minus of b. Here 4 is minus of b by a is 4. So here we can write alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a. We are just changing this into 4 by 4 just to make it equal to minus b by a. Then alpha beta is equal to 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 which is equal to 1 by 4 which is equal to c by a so we have proved alpha beta is equal to c by a and alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a so this is how we can find the roots or the zeros of a polynomial and verify the relationship with, with, between the zeros and the coefficients of the polynomials
That's all in this video. We will cover rest of the topics in the chapter polynomial in the next video. Stay tuned.